Hi, I'm Eric Johnson at Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management, and I'm here today with Kate Burke. Kate is the Chief Administrative Officer of Alliance Bernstein. Welcome, Kate. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, technology is having a huge impact in financial services, and we see impact in all areas. How do you see it impacting the kind of work streams of financial roles at Alliance Bernstein? It's been interesting to see it evolve over the last 15 years I've been at AB, where I would say you've really seen a requirement for what I would call like technical literacy in the workplace. So every single person at AB has to have some level and comfort with technology because it's just pervasive in everything that we do. But more specifically, when you look at, say, our investment processes, you're now seeing a high demand for data scientists, like the ability to understand and unlock unstructured data to find investment insights is an increasingly important yeah. skill. So whether you're a portfolio manager who is looking for new insights and looking to your analysts to help provide it, you need to have some understanding of what are the capabilities of Python as a language and what does that mean in terms of what you may be able to uncover versus uh, if you're in on the sales side of the organization, business intelligence is all driven by client data and understanding what is what are clients interested in. And then certainly from a service orientation, clients as end users are now expecting data easily at their fingertips. So the performance of our portfolios, what does it look like? What are what, They want to be able to self-serve mm -hmm. many of their own needs because that's what we do in our day-to-day -day right lives, right? Like it's you. right there. So you're yeah. used to doing that in your personal life. Why can't you do that in your professional life as well in terms of finding that access to information? And then clearly, you know, in terms of all of the corporate functions, so all of infrastructure, you know, the, the backbone of our organization is basically built on either uh, technology that we home built to give us what we thought were competitive advantages or applications that we brought in um, that we thought could accelerate our ability to deliver client results. So like one great example of that is on our fixed income trading desk, they've created a bot that helps them find liquidity in the marketplace, which should give us an advantage in terms of filling orders at good price at the right time in the market. And so these are all technical innovations that are actually driven, and that was an idea as an example that was thought of by a trader on wow. our desk wow. and said, I think this is something we could do. And so taking that subject matter expertise and having technological expertise in-house to create those solutions, I think really is a competitive advantage today. That is neat. Yeah, it's very cool. So there's been so much debate in the asset management world around a disruption, a mm -hmm. disruption around passive versus active. And certainly Alliance Bernstein is an active manager. Uh, how do you think about that as a firm? So we clearly believe at Alliance Bernstein that active management is the way to beat the average market return, right? When you when you choose passive, essentially you're choosing to have the, the average. The average yeah. um, and our view is, is that there's a way to create diversified products and portfolios that really take advantage of dislocation in the market and find active um, strategies that allow you to beat the market over the long run. I think today, over 90% of our assets are outperforming the market. And so over time, being in an active strategy, especially in periods of higher volatility or market distress, you really want that outperformance um, and that active management versus accepting uh, simply market returns. And so we believe our long-term process really supports us in terms of being a, a successful asset manager and are very focused on continuing to build out those kind of capabilities within the firm. Well, certainly uh, your organization is changing. Uh, mm -hmm and a lot of change in the way teams are mm -hmm. compiled and run. And as you kind of think about helping leaders build their teams, what kinds of advice do you give them? When we're thinking about team structure, and, and this gets into investment teams um, versus sales team, you know, having cognitive diversity or diversity of thought in the team we think is really important. So having people that have different perspectives, different ways of thinking, we believe drive to better outcome. And that means whether it's uh, socioeconomic diversity uh, or ethnic diversity or just a political diversity, like different thinking yeah. really helps structure, I think we think a much more healthy debate yeah. at the workplace. Um, and then on top of that, it's really about understanding 
not only what is it that you're trying to achieve, but the skills that you need to achieve it. And putting a team together that builds on the best skills of the individuals. People often talk about uh, how you have to develop your areas of weakness. Yeah. Well, I also think that there's a way to, like when you're building a team, it's how do you leverage the best yeah. of what you do and, and bringing together a team that has different skills, that really excels in different areas and putting them in a room together, one, to learn from each other and learn how to maybe develop some of their weaknesses, but ultimately get those skills in, the, in a room to deliver a, an ideal outcome. And so it's very much focused on, on skills and working towards people's strengths around team building versus saying these, this, you're an individual, you have something you should yeah. improve. Yeah. Play to your strength. Yeah. The more you play to the strength, we think that the more we can position people to play to their strengths, the better we think we can achieve as a firm. Awesome. Well, one of the things I love about my job is I get to meet amazing executives like yourself with <laughs> deep uh, experience and you've had a lot of different roles uh, at Alliance Bernstein, including mm -hmm. running all of human resources mm -hmm. and now this new role as Chief Administrative Officer. I'd love if you could share a leadership lesson that you've learned along the way. Probably the number one thing I would say I've learned is that you have to be able to embrace change. Mm -hmm. Along the way, the one thing it, that always is consistent is change. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes it's moderate change and sometimes it can re really be transformational change. And if you shy away from it, or if you go to the status quo, you really risk not only limiting yourself, but, but the firm in terms of being able to look through it and see how can you um, embrace that change and, and recognize the challenges within it and separate your emotion first and be very rational in reflecting of what's happening and why and, and not be protective of things you may have done yourself in the past or strategies you may have um, positioned for the firm for and be willing to really question them. Come up with your alternatives, pick the best solution, have conviction, a conviction in it, and then bring the emotion back, right? Because you need that emotion also, I think, to help carry the firm through. Uh, often what it is can be very challenging or transformational times. And so it's really just being willing to accept what you don't know, ask the right questions, and um, being open to saying, let's find the right solution together versus um, saying the old way is the right way. Such a timeless lesson. Uh, it happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kate, thanks so much for spending the day with us at Th Vanderbilt. Thanks so much for having me.